Hey everybody, this is Beth at Quilt and Lace. I have Joanne Benko with me. Hi everyone. Oh my gosh, and I'm so thankful because uh, we were busy today and so Joanne Benko is just pulling us right up by our bootstraps and gonna help us work through this. Yeah, so um, thank you. I am glad to be here. I'm gonna try to share this for um, everybody that else that might be watching somewhere else. So I'm trying to scroll and get your live video here going. All right. Oh, I keep and seeing, I keep seeing the one that you did yesterday. <laughs> uh, Which and so everybody knows what we're doing. Uh, this is our free pattern Friday. And we are continuing from what we did last Friday, which is a quilted sewing mat that Joanne Banco created. And uh, she's got a couple versions out there. So uh, she, you've been kind enough to share those uh, links so that people can get to it. So that's wonderful. And today our goal is to work on embellishing the pocket uh, by using our embroidery machines. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So I uh, would love to know in the in the um, in the chat here. I see I see Rose, I see Pat, I see Caroline. I'd Hello. love to know if, if and Wendy. I wonder if anybody here has been sewing along with us. I'd, I'd please let us know if you've been been uh, working on a, your own sewing machine, Matt, and how it's going for you while we're going along here. Okay. Um, so, I you going to be um i'm going to take the camera off me and put it on the 3600 uh because you're going to show right on your luminaire or I am. camera so we're going to kind of um we're going to tag team a little bit i'm going to show um first i'm going to show how to do uh creating the pocket on the luminaire with special luminaire features okay but you know me people that know me know i always promise to help everybody i possibly can and Excellent. find a wide variety, a wide variety of ways to do this. So first of all, we did have two versions of this from from the first place. I know that you've got the uh, sewing machine only version uh, posted on your website. Correct the um, applique. So that was done with applique and decorative stitches, and that version absolutely could be done on virtually any machine you could you could imagine. Right? You can. Yes. All you need is a zigzag stitch. If you got a few decorative stitches, that's going to be um, a big, big benefit. It's a great place to use your decorative stitches. But if you have embroidery capability, um, then you can do the embroidered pocket version. Let me grab mine real quick. I'll just show show a little quick little. Oh, so pretty. So pretty. Um, this one is a lot of fun to customize the, the pockets. And today I'm going to show how to do this. Oh, this is drives me crazy. This exact type of pocket on the luminaire using special luminaire features. And then after we finish with that, um, Beth will be sitting at the uh, Brother 3600D. Remember, I'm a brother ambassador. I always like to get that out there. And she's going um, to do the exact same that I thing that I'm doing. I'm going to do it on the luminaire but she's going to do it on the 3600 because the second version of the pocket that I have for you will work on any brother um, embroidery machine. So it doesn't matter what size, doesn't matter what level. I'm going to be using a four by four hoop and I'm going to use uh, built in frame shapes and very simple, but I think you'll get, I think you'll get a big kick out of it. So I just want to say hi to a few more people. I see Dawn and Kathy and Josie and uh, Wendy. So great to have you here. Because in a minute here, once I switch over to my other camera, I won't, I won't be able to watch um, comments and at the same time. So <laughs> what I'll be glad to do, Joanne, is um, I'll make sure to say hi to people, and if they've got questions, I'll just yell it out. Okay. Great. Yes. All right. Good. Do hey, Doris. Do so I'm going to go ahead and switch my camera now, then, so that I'm shining my camera on the luminaire. Okay. So give me a second to do that. All right. Thanks for joining us today, guys. What we're doing today, I've got my camera pointed on the NQ3600 machine, which is a nice brother embroidery machine that does the uh, 5 by 7 and a 6 by 10 or I should say up to a 6 by 10 And uh, Joanne is going to be on the Luminaire. And we are continuing to work on our free pattern Friday 
uh, pattern the uh, quilted sewing mat. And we have done the things uh, so far. We've quilted on the machine and we've done some applique. And um, tonight we are going to be showing how you can create uh, or embellish your pockets with embroidery. So we're going to start out on the luminaire with Joanne. And then uh, we've got a nice um, method that Joanne has created for the 3600 also. Or any, okay. any, um uh, uh, any, any, yep, any, 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 four by four. Um, any embroidery machine with um, the frame shapes built in, which is one of the things that um, brother is actually known for. So yeah, we, and they do it in, and even the tiniest of machines, they absolutely, do it. Absolutely, absolutely, you can do this on a four by four if that's what you have available to you. So hey, you Josie, see, hey Brenda, hey Joanne, can you see my screen pretty good? Hey, Brenda, I can see your screen. Okay, all right, then I'm ready to get started. Okay, great. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to touch my design center. Oops, I'm sorry. Duh, that's not what I want to do. I want to touch embroidery. We're going to my design center later. <laughs> We're starting out at embroidery, okay? So what I want to do is I want to build a design for the 4x4 four four hoop. And remember, all of these pockets that are attached to that were made to fit with um, with the embroidery design done in a four by four hoop. So when I cut my actual fabric pieces for that embroidered pocket piece, I cut it to equal eight inches square or approximately. You're gonna have excess fabric, but that's gonna be trimmed down once you actually create the pocket. And then remember, you're gonna pre-treat your fabric by backing it with the fusible fleece. We talked a lot about that in the um, previous shows and and which kind you wanted to use. So make sure that that is um, completely fused to the wrong side of your fabric. Okay. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, one of my favorite, favorite, favorite features in embroidery mode. Um, and this is this is found in a lot of the different brother machines. So check your set mode and see if you have this option after I show it to you. I'm going to tell the machine, look, sweetie, I want to design for a four by four hoop. So will you help me out here? Will you make sure that that four by four hoop is visible on the screen so that I know the boundaries that I'm working in? So I'm going to tell her what I need by going to the set mode. And I just happen to be on the right page, but it, it's actually on page eight of 12. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to touch up here. I'm going to touch frame size. And I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to pick four by four. So in a second here, you're going to see what that does for me is now it brings up that four by four square. Hopefully you can see that um, right on the design screen so that I know that that is my my boundary. OK, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to build the the design that I want to use to create the oval shape and the fill stitches that went around outside of my pocket. If you notice, when I showed you the sample, I did a uh, diamond quilt uh, stitches right here so that they kind of coordinated with the diamond quilting that we did on the base of the mat, okay? All right, so I'm gonna start by going to the frame shape category, which is right there. And I'm going to select the oval and obviously you can select whatever you want, but the oval works pretty good to be able to fit lettering within because it gives you a little bit of, of length, you know, with that stretched out space and it just has a nice clean look. So I'm going to pick the um, very first option, which is going to give me a triple straight stitch. I'm going to go ahead and touch set and now I want to edit the size. So I'm going to touch edit. I'm going to touch size and the size that I used uh, to be really specific was 1.39 by 2.76. So if I remember right, I just went ahead and I shrunk the oval down as far as I possibly could. That gave me the 1.39 for the height. And then I just stretched it out until I got 2.76. 
And again, you know, you can play around with this. The beauty of this is if you don't like it, you can fix it before you stitch it. So, so oh, there we go. Okay, so that one worked out really good for all three of my words that I used. And I'm going to go ahead and say, okay. And the next thing that I want to do is create that fancy fill stitch around it. And so that's why I say this is a specific uh, feature on the Luminaire. It's one of the extra bells and whistles that you get um, with the upgrade. Um, so this was upgrade two, if, I, if I'm if i um, correct on that. Beth, you might want to uh, double check my... Yep, because uh -huh, you could do the stippling, but to uh, do the echo and the... Um, I mean, you could do the echo and the stippling before, but the new fills. Right. So now with the with the upgrade, um, it was upgrade two, I believe. It gave us the option. Was it upgrade one or upgrade two? <laughs> two and for it, the additional fills. Okay. Okay. So that gave me the opportunity now to just have um, more options with fill stitches instead of just stippling. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select um, the fancy fill. But before I do that, Again, I need to, she, she, she forgot what I told her before. I told her I wanted a four by four, but that's because we went into a different mode. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to touch, I'm going to actually touch the back arrow because that'll take me to the end instead of the, the, the beginning of the next one. And I'm going to tell it um, that I want to use a four by four. So it will automatically perfectly fill the entire four inch hoop when I select that right there on the screen. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select that um, special pattern. So I'm going to go, oh, I should have done that before. All right. Uh, that's what I should have done first. I should have selected my pattern first. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to select my pattern right up there in the upper right-hand corner. Give her a chance to think. Oh, now I have two. Okay. Joanne just made a mistake. That looks pretty though, doesn't it? I kind of like it, <laughs> but that's not what I want. So let me cancel that out and let me undo and then let's start all over again. Okay. <laughs> Is this my Friday glitch? I don't know, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to give you a second chance to see it all over again, this time the right way. So I'm going to touch the fill pattern icon and I'm going to select the fill that I want. I want that lovely diamond effect there. I'm going to say OK. And now I'm going to say I don't want to fill the whole hoop because by default, it fills the largest hoop for the luminaire, which is 10 and 5 eighths by 16. So I'm going to click one arrow back, which will take me to the very last selection, which is the 4 by 4 OK? And there you see I've got the diamonds. Now that looks okay, but by simply resizing using that sizing key, I know if I go down to 80%, it's going to bring those diamonds perfectly aligned with the edge of my four inch hoop. Pretty cool, huh? That's as easy as it is. Looks good so far. All right. So I'm going to say okay. And that brings me back to my edit screen. And now is the time and the place for me to add my lettering. So make sure if you repeat this, that you do it in the order that I showed you, because otherwise you're going to get fill stitches around your lettering. We don't want fill stitches around the lettering. We want fill stitches only around that frame. And I'm going to go ahead and blow this up with the preview key so that you can see exactly what that looks like. Okay. And just look how perfect that, that diamond shape uh, fits along the edge there. And then it's going to give me that straight stitch outline as well. So it will perfectly enclose all those stitches. So remember, when, when you're doing this, go ahead and, and play around with the size. Um, that's going to give you the opportunity to see how much of a particular pattern you can get to fill that area and fill it um, so that it's you're getting you're taking advantage of the pretty pretty pattern effect. Okay. So now I am ready to add my lettering. So I'm going to go ahead and touch add. And that's going to take me to my lettering mode. So I have lots and lots and lots of options here. Um, I will tell you that certain letters are going to be larger than other ones. So test it out, see what's going to work. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and just pick two for um, actually, you know, I'm going to go, I'm going to go back. I'm going to pick the one that I picked for uh, my sample, which was 20. Okay. And I'm going to program in the word pins. So capital P, lowercase i, n, s. And obviously it's too large, but that's okay. We'll be able to change that size. I'm going to go ahead and go to edit and shrink that down until that fits. Okay. Now we have another really cool option here. Let's just say you chose a letter, uh, a, a font style that, you know, maybe you want to do different words. Maybe you don't want to do just needles, pins, and notions. You want to do scissors or some other, some other words in there that are longer. And you're, you can only size down to a certain amount. So if, for example, the letters look too big, then you can go ahead and you can try out different lettering styles by simply touching that icon there. Okay. And go ahead and, oh, let's see. What do I want to do there? Um, nope. I want to go into. Yeah. It was the T in the bottom right on that font. Yeah, you, have it. The, you know, the cat just jumped up and knocked something oh. down and threw me all off, off kilter here. So your font. <laughs> right there yeah and the bottom okay. bottom right next to set next to set right that's where i want to go okay so that would allow me then to try out different styles so you can see that one's considerably smaller you know that they all fit in a different area so i could go ahead and i could scroll through all of those until I find the one I want. I wanted to maximize the size. <laughs> now she's now she's sniffing the camera and she's going to get right in front of the screen here in just a minute. There she is. <laughs> All right, move on. I don't yeah, I don't I don't one. have my puppy dog tonight, so I'm I'm pet free uh mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for the disruption. I thought if I fed her that that would keep her out, but that wasn't that wasn't good enough. She always uh, knows. So Josie has been joining in with us. So she says she she loves your pooty cat and uh she did wish she had a luminaire. Aww. <laughs> Thanks we're Josie. On the other one too. Although yeah. we're here if you need a luminaire, but we'll show you how you can do it on a smaller machine. <laughs> All right. So you see all that um, expanded now in the preview window. It's as easy as that. And if I show the in the um, in the four inch hoop, you could see that's going to fit absolutely perfectly. OK, so looks wonderful. Pretty, pretty easy, huh? Looks great. Now, can they save that background and just put a different word in yep. for the next? Yep. You sure can. Yep. You can go ahead and you can um, you can put that into memory and then just go ahead and um, delete the wording and change the words if you want to. So that's easy to do. Excellent. Excellent. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's how I created my pockets. Now I'm going to take one quick second and just show you if you wanted to, you could actually create this as an in the hoop design. I did not. I took this um, and here's my, my finished one here. Okay. I took this and then I just took a simple, um, piece of lining fabric, which I can't find right now, and put cut it um, with a half inch seam allowance larger, put it right sides together, sewed it, left an opening, and used that as my, you know, as my finished pocket. But if you wanted to be clever about this, after you stitch your pocket, you could go into my design center, okay, and I'll show you how you could create a shape to actually stitch your pocket. So we would go into shapes and we would pick that square. We would say, okay, we would go then to the stitches and we would choose a triple stitch. Um, I always like to use a triple stitch when I'm trying to create an, uh, an actual, you know, piece that's going to function as a lining for in the hoop, because you don't have to worry then when you trim your corners and trim your seam allowance, you don't have to worry about the strength of the seam. That triple stitch is going to give you a really good strength. Good point. And then I'm going to change it to blue. Okay. And now I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Undo that. Um, I want to go ahead and select this. So I want to turn off that pencil. Okay. 
No, nope. all right. I'm uh it's right next to the memory to the left of the memory. Yeah, there we go. There we go. I want to select the whole thing there. Okay. No, that's not what I'm that's not what I want to do because I want to I want to do resize that. Okay. I'm going to clear that out and do that from scratch. All right? Cuz actually the best time to do that is right after you create it. So I've got my shape there, I've got my size key, and now I can go ahead and resize that. And I want to resize that to 3.89. And I will tell you that 3.89 is the maximum size for anything that you do in the 4-inch hoop. Ask me how I know that, because I've done it uh, 100 times. It, it Anything that you put in that 4-inch hoop that you want to make uh, maximum size you want to do that with the uh, uh, 3.89 as your as your full size make sense are you with me um, so uh, Josie is saying that uh, the triple stitch is what makes it looks like a crochet thread um, I think she might be thinking about the chain stitch well the 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 triple stitch just gives it more more thickness so okay. uh, if you if you say crochet thread thinking crochet thread is thicker than normal thread then then yeah it, it you know it could um but there is actually all different other types of of stitch options here too so i'm going to go ahead we just and uh, becky hayes has joined us in april's uh sweat so hey guys good and then april's thinking she should add beads to oh, the that pockets. would be fun. Yeah, that would be fun. So there are all my stitch options. So I've got satin stitch, I've got um, double stitch, I've got triple stitch, star stitch, diamond stitch, blanket stitch, V stitch, uh, decorative stitch, and no stitch at all if I don't want to stitch that at all. So, I mean, there are so many things you can do in, in my design center. This I just thought would be a really fun, quick little way to show you that if you wanted to do this entirely in the hoop and not have to take it out and sew it, at all you'd have your pocket all ready to turn and ready to stitch you know the, the only reason i didn't do that originally is because i um needed to save a little bit of of prep time so all right <laughs> and to so, show us what you made exactly <laughs> so now what i want to do is i just want to erase part of that um bottom area just 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 literally just erase part of that line that's excellent. I haven't thought of doing this, but that's so easy to yeah, add. So then that'll give me an opening. Okay. I would just go next. And I would go ahead and set that. There's nothing else I need to do. I could save it if I wanted to, but then I my this would already be in my hoop. I would simply layer a second piece of fabric on top that was oversized, at least a half inch extending around is what I would um, suggest. And then I would go ahead and I would embroider this nice little square with a hole in it. And I would turn that through the opening, clip my corners. Always make sure though, if you were going to uh, do this and you're gonna cut your, your seam allowance around, make sure you leave a nice little seam allowance all the way down here, sticking out just a little bit from this area. So I'm, I'm kind of like drawing it on here. You go down like that, across like that and up like that. And that would be your extra, extra seam allowance. So that there you have go. something to turn under when you close that opening. And then when you actually stitch your pockets, I'll go ahead and grab mine. When you actually go to top stitch that pocket, you could just top stitch that opening closed right along there with your, with your top stitching. Yeah, that's such a great, great way to do it. I think, I think that's the way I would like to do it. I, um, I don't always sew as straight as I would like. Plus, that will give you the perfect uh, square, so you don't have to measure and and everything. So yep. I, I think that's a yep. great idea. Exactly. You know, it's funny. It's just like we always do this. We make something, and then we think of ten different ways to do it when we're done. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of how that how that ends up. Yeah. So. And Linda's saying, "Great idea." And uh, Josie is just saying, yeah, the the, the uh, crochet stitch like you do on on um, uh, uh, um, 
uh, what are they called? Not doilies. Um, yeah. yeah, doilies. Is that, yeah. you know, how you can crochet the little doilies? Yeah, that's what they're called, right? For mm -hmm. like, yeah. 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 It is really pretty though when you use the um, you know standard embroidery thread. Remember, remember that I did an online uh, uh, little demo uh, yesterday, and the discussion came up about what to you what kind of thread to use when you do this fill stitch type in you know embroidery work. And we've got this capability on a, you know a few different machines in in the brother line. But, you know, when you think about it, I mean, it, you're, you're quilting, but you're really embroidering. So what's our new terminology? Quilt broidery? <laughs> I think that word got made up um, yeah. when, all the, when brother invented all these beautiful fill stitches. But you always, in my opinion, you still want to always use embroidery thread when you do this type of um, uh, fill stitches um, for a couple of reasons. Number one, even though you're not, you know, embroidering something that's, that's a shape, even though it's just a straight stitch, embroidery thread always has a little bit more depth and dimension than ordinary sewing thread because ordinary sewing thread is flat and it doesn't have that sheen. So even though you're not really noticing it, believe it or not, your eye is picking up just a little bit of that um, extra shine from the embroidery thread and it always looks, it always looks prettier. The yeah. other thing you always want to think about is that embroidery thread is just the right thickness for any type of embroidery design that you're building with your machine. So that that's kind of like when, when your machine was, was born, it was born to have embroidery thread as its main food. <laughs> okay. And it is awfully pretty. It's, it's the right thickness. And if you, you know, play around with other threads, you may have uh, a poor looking, uh, you know, finished effect, you may even have some shredding and breakage and things like that. So I'm sure you would agree with that, that you want to always stick with, um, with embroidery thread. Uh, it does make a much bigger statement. Definitely. And uh, uh, Josie is saying that she likes the, uh, the depth of it, that it's gorgeous. And she thinks that uh, what you've done blends in perfectly. Good, good. Yeah. And I see April's asking, are the small embroidered pockets actually smaller on top of larger? Yes. Yes. Your, your main pocket, I'll, I'll grab mine real quick here. Remember, your main pocket was cut um, 10, 10 inches. Inch, yeah. By the width of your sewing mat. By the width of your sewing mat, exactly. So this was what the piece looked like. And then that goes down first. So you can see that layers down first. And then that gives you one big pocket all the way across your mat. And then your patch pockets get sewn on top of that before you layer it all together to give you individual little pockets to stuff things in. And then you simply tack that down in between that area. And then that whole, you know, gives you another division here and then it gives you smaller spaces. Remember last week we showed a couple little doodads tucked into some of those smaller pockets. So it works out perfect. Okay. It get, ends up giving you a lot, a lot of storage. And then I'll just mention one other quick thing while, while we're doing this. You know, once you've got your pockets filled, if you fold this in half, then you can roll it. And if you wanted to, you actually could sew ties at each end here so that once that's all rolled up, this is another idea that came to me after the fact. Once that's all rolled up, you know, you could you could tie that around and secure that. And this would make a great little traveling mat. So if you're taking your mat with you to um, a class at Quilts and Lace. <laughs> or you're going Very good. Out. Yep. Whatever you whatever you want to do, so you just actually you would only need to sew ties on one end. You would only want to sew them on, on one end, so that once that was rolled up, you could wrap your ties around, tie that in a bow, however you wanted to. Um, you could also just uh, put a rubber band around it. <laughs> <laughs> now, we would never do that. <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, sewing enthusiasts always get their projects totally completed, don't they? They it, never do. Yeah. They never do things with pins or 
no. safety pins or no. We're going to add rip rock and ribbon and. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's that. Easy peasy, huh? Very good. Yep. So right. uh, April and Doris are just uh, saying that they understand that it's clever. They got it. Let me see. Oh, April's just saying. So April is a new luminaire owner, and she's just saying that it might take a crane to move her luminaire from class to class. Yeah. Well, and and actually, I mean, that's why I, I'm a big believer in having, um, you know, a little a second machine. You know, something in, in the smaller range, and there's so many options for that that you can yep. take to class. And you know, this mat would be ideal for for having one to go with that machine as well. So, the yeah. um, my, I have my camera right now on this little cute little um, machine uh, by Brother. It has the Star Wars on it, uh, so it is a nice little sewing machine for such a little machine. They've put a lot on it, um, but it does do a four by four hoop. So even on this small yeah. machine, they can. But probably my most popular, and I'm going to move my camera now, um, traveling machine uh, is the 3600, especially for luminaire owners, because you do get spoiled. And so it is very hard to go to a that doesn't have as many features as your yeah. luminaire. You know, the, the, the 3600 is, you know, that, that level of machine is kind of like Goldilocks porridge. It's just right. It's yeah. just right in size. You're right. You because you still have a lot of um, big features. You've got a six by ten hoop. You've got um, the ability to cut jump threads. You've got a lot of designs built in. You have a nice color screen with lots of editing functions. But it it is a manageable machine to to carry around. Once that embroidery unit is um, detached from that and put into a separate tote. The machine itself doesn't require a very large footprint so it is nice yeah very nice okay so like i said i promised to show um another version that you can do on any any machine all right so i'm going to go ahead and show you my sample real quick so you can see what i did here and this was all done using built-in frame shapes Built-in frame shapes have been a favorite feature of mine in the Brother Machines for ever the very first machine that, that ever came out. And I've written so many different blog posts and done so many different things just using the whole idea of frame shapes somewhere built into the actual um, project. One of the, you know, maybe the simplest things to do with it is to use it for a, uh, a monogram outline. So frame shapes all look like this. So you can see I'm pointing to my icon on my machine. And Beth, you've got um, the exact same icon on your machine in the lower right hand corner there. I sure do. That when you touch that, that takes you right into frame shapes. Okay, so different machines might have a few extra, you know, capabilities with this, but all of your basic shapes are built into to every machine. So again, I, you know, we, we used the oval one to create the center around our uh, lettering for that. But what I thought would be fun to do is just show you how you could create a similar quilted effect using any shape. I just happen to pick the diamond again because I kind of like to coordinate that diamond effect. All right. So All right. you want me to go ahead and pick a diamond? I'll go. Yep. I'll, I'll tell you what, if you can you see what I'm doing? I sure can. All right. So if you want to just follow along, we'll do the exact same thing. I'm going to select the diamond. Okay. I'm going to select the diamond triple stitch, which is your very first option. Oh, is that that one? Very first option. So that it should be right 001. Okay. okay. Then we're going to go ahead and touch set. Okay. And we want to change the size. So for me, it's going to be touching edit. For you, it's going to be touching the size key. Okay. And for the sake of um, simplicity and quickness, let's just shrink that all the way down to the smallest size. Till it stops. 
Okay, and you could obviously play around with that. You could um, change the shape a little bit by making it a little bit less tall, maybe, you know, stretching it out a little bit, but we'll, we'll stay with that. Okay, so we're going to say, okay. All right, and um, now we want to create a second copy of this. So I'm not sure on your machine, um, your option is going to be to add. Yeah, I have to add. Okay, so you go ahead and touch add and select that same same shape. Okay, and again, so that we can kind of follow along and do this together, go ahead and um, shrink that down to the same size that you did on the other one. So we know that we're working with the same size. And hang on for one second, I'm going to show you the option on my machine, on the Luminaire, I have a copy key. So I'm going to touch that copy key. That's going to give me a second copy, but in, in reality, it's a duplicate. And in duplicate, uh, it works the same way as the Brother PE11 software does. When you duplicate, it offsets the design a little bit so that you can see exactly what you duplicated. So hang on for a minute. Let me finish my work here. In order to um, have that back in the center, I'm going to touch move and I'm going to I'm going to center it. So now you and I are equal, Beth. We've got the okay. same, same thing going on here. OK, but what we want to do, though, is that that second one that, that we brought in, you brought it in by um, Adding. Add. I brought it in by duplicate. We want to go to the size key now while that's still selected. And I just, you know, the way my brain works, I like to do things in the same amounts each time. So for what I did with, with my sample here, each and every time I added a diamond, I touched the size key to increase it five times. So one, two, three, four, five. Got it. Okay. And then I just simply repeated that process over again. So let me do mine real quick. I would I would touch duplicate. I would touch move. I would recenter it. I would touch OK. I would touch size and I would increase that. Five times. Okay. And I just kept doing that until it came very close to filling my four by four hoop. We don't have to go through the whole process. We can you know, we can end that. Um, now, but one other thing that I wanted to add is I really wanted it to look similar to this one where I had that nice outline around it. So to get that, I just went back to add and I selected the square shape, the triple stitch, I touched set, and then once again. All right, I, I got to keep up with you. So now I'm adding a square. Yeah, if you want to, if you want to. I and mean, we didn't finish our diamond, but you can you can do the same thing I'm doing. So add a square, and then I'm gonna make it the triple stitch for that one also. Correct. Mm -hmm. And then is that the 001? Correct. Because see how mine looks like it's uh something more yep. fancy. It it's just when it's showing you a square, it shows you more the 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 fact that it's gonna sew three times. Okay. But it's gonna sew on top of itself three times. Alrighty. And now what I'm doing, what am I doing with that square? Now we're going to increase that size to the size that I told you is the maximum for a four inch hoop, which is 3.89. And I know that's going to be exactly the biggest that I can get in my four by four hoop. Okay. So the only thing we skipped here is we skipped making another diamond, another diamond, another diamond, another diamond. It's all done the exact same way. And then we would just simply go add and we would go to our fonts and we would choose whatever we wanted for that. Remember, if you choose um, the largest size, you can always go smaller by going to edit and resizing that. If you choose the smallest size, when you choose a font, you can always go bigger, but you can't go smaller. Does that make sense? Okay, good. 
All right, so I picked the largest size, so now I'm just going to make it small. Just drink it until it fits inside your diamond. And I think I might try a different font. So even on this machine here, I have a font edit because I think mine looks like a blob when I pick that font. So exactly. Let me go with Go you back. have the exact same capability there that I have on my yeah, cool? air. So you can you can um, play around with your fonts. You can play around with spacing. You can change it so it's multicolored. Uh, you just have so many options. They really put a lot of the high end features uh, right into that edit mode there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Yeah, and then of course you know we could have added like I said we could have added more diamonds around. Um, just for fun, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go home and I'm going to bring up um, one that I put into memory. So Josie's being funny here. So uh, wanted the luminaire. Now she's just going to go right up to that 10 needle. Good job, Josie. <laughs> I think I've heard Josie say that already a couple times. So I think she's Where does Josie live? Up. Where's Josie from? I'm not sure. Josie sews. Where, where, you want to tell us where you're at? If you want to tell us where you're at, go ahead and do that. Yeah, tell us where um, you're at, Josie. She's uh, one, of, one of my best sewing friends here, but I don't know where she lives because we're we're always only online oh, together, right, Josie? Hard. <laughs> did, you so offset that those, did you offset those at all? Are they, I did the exact um, same thing five five times. Boop, 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 okay. boop, five times. <laughs> Very good. And did Josie says she's thing? from Columbia, Maryland. Oh, okay. I um, I used to have a friend that lived um, right in that area there. So wonderful. That's cool. Very cool. So that's it. I mean, like, you know, play around with the different shapes. Um, I have done. I have used this exact same function to create quilted blocks. Believe it or not, when I didn't have the capability um, that I have in the Luminaire, I didn't have all those fancy fill stitches. I took frame shapes and I simply did the exact same thing where I created um, an echo effect yeah. and, and made a uh, quilted block. Sometimes I put a design in it. Sometimes I used it just as a, you know, as a, as a way to actually quilt my, my patchwork um, for my quilt. So excellent. Try it out. It's a lot of fun. It stitches out and you can see it stitches out the exact same, the exact same way. That's really cute. Gives you, gives you a lot of fun. Um, Fun ways to do that. Um, so just a note here, we have a couple people that have either the Stellaire or the Baby Lock version of the Stellaire XJ1. They have the L tear. And uh, what I'm thinking of doing, what Joanne uh, suggested, is that perhaps tomorrow um, for the Facebook is I can show how to do this uh, same technique that uh, Joanne did on the Luminaire on the Stellaire. And of course, that would be the L tear. Yep. Uh, so um, you can create this pocket um, using my design center. If you if you don't have the um, the luminaire with the with the feature of adding the fill stitches in embroidery mode, you can do it in my design center and then send it to embroidery. So yeah, yeah Beth, I'll give you I'll give you a little cheat sheet on that, and then you oh, can perfect. you can show that off tomorrow. I'll I'll try to pop in, but oh, that'd tomorrow, be great. Tomorrow promises to be a perfect swimming day in my neighborhood. And oh, I, you might nice. find me playing hooky and going swimming. Um, my my uh, my local friends know that uh, next to sewing, uh, swimming is one of my absolute favorite things to do. <laughs> oh, um, excellent. Um, it's been raining so much here. It's been hard to find time to uh, get out there. It's usually thunder and lightning by the time I get home. <laughs> uh, well, you have a lot longer season than we do. We have to we have to get it in really fast. <laughs> really fast. <laughs> by by um, the time Labor Day comes around, the the whole air starts changing. So. <laughs> oh. oh, and I was going to say too, the Dream Machine. So uh, the yes. um, on the Stellar, it'll be very similar to the Dream Machine too. Crime. I see April's learned some things, so that's that's great. That's good. All right. So um, what do we want to do next? I think we want to show just how you would layer it up to to finish it. Right. Yeah. Yes. Now, uh, let me go get my parts and pieces. You go ahead and I'm going to switch back to my camera that, All that right. uh, I have here. I'm 
come back. All right. Oh, Dora says she wants um, rain. She's baking. <laughs> Um, so one thing is that um, I am not a garment sewer like uh, Joanne is. And um, so I do more quilting and that type of thing. So um, anyway, in uh, assembling this, I did uh, uh, just uh, fast forward and didn't read closely how Joanne did the binding on the uh, uh, quilted sewing mat. So uh, what I did is I took my two and a half inch strips and I did sew them together. That's good. And, That's fine. Uh, so I made a continuous one. So whereas Joanne had a much quicker uh, probably method of sewing them onto the sides, I did make it one long one. So this is going to be my binding and I'll be uh, pressing it in half. Uh, wrong sides together, and then I'll go around the mat with that. So that is something that I thought I can show tomorrow, that final binding part of it and going around the corners. Either way works. Absolutely. Either way works. So let's just talk about um, the layering for a second. So you've got your, your quilted mat. and we, well, Here's uh, my quilted I think mat. In the very first session, we talked about the fact that you could quilt that through just the, the fashion fabric and the batting. Or you could do it all the way through to your your backing. Yeah. The reason that I did it only through the um, the fashion fabric and the batting it was because if you wanted to, it just left open the option of sewing the whole thing together pillowcase style when you're done. Right. So then you could skip doing the binding altogether if you want to. <laughs> if you want to do something really quick, that's a really quick way to do it. You just, that is a very quick way to know, do it. Right sides together. But using right, so the binding, of my mat, the binding and, gives you the opportunity to pick one of those pretty colors, and you know use a different fabric, you have a contrast there, and give you a nice edge finish. So that's kind of a little, you know, just ups the game a little bit, makes it a little yeah. special. And then uh, my pocket. So um, would I go ahead at this point and uh, trim my mat down to make it just a nice rectangle? If you needed to square it off, yeah, you could square it off. Okay. If it, right, just trim it, it all even. A bit. And then your your folded edge of your pocket would be the top edge. You'd match raw edges on the bottom. Okay. So there is the raw edge of. Uh, so I would line that up. And, and now my let's fold. back up though for a minute because if you were adding the patch pockets you would be sewing those on beforehand. Remember? Right, I got it upside down. Hold on. You'd be sewing all those on beforehand. And I've got a camera not positioned very well here. I got to go around it. So yeah, there's my applique and I'm still working on my decorative stitches. But there's my raw edge on the bottom, raw edge on this side. Eh, over there. I and then you just far enough back. I'm sorry, Joanne. You're okay. You're okay. I think everybody gets the picture here. Then you just layer your backing on the back and, and sew your binding on, and then you, know, sew your, um, you could sew your pocket divisions um, now or, or later, whatever, whatever you want to do. So the, the patch pockets are kind of like the, the extra icing on the cake. Yeah. You can have that one long pocket. You could divide it up. You could, you know, trim it just with applique and decorative stitches um and be done with it or you could add you know the patch pockets you could add patch pockets and applique so either way you want to do it there's there's you know your your choice it's like you know sewing is a lot like going to the uh ice cream shop you know the person <laughs> you came with they might want just plain vanilla with a little bit of chocolate sauce you know you might want the whole banana split so <laughs> <laughs> of whatever, course whatever you want you know with all the jimmies on top whatever flavor suits yeah. your fancy and then I did want to um, just make a quick note um, to everyone here. The instructions for both versions, along with the original video when I did uh, the, the one way I've been showing here, the blue one, I did that on It's So Easy TV in C, uh, season 2000. I just uploaded that today on my YouTube channel. So oh. if you go to Let's Go Sew with Joanne Banco 
on YouTube. You can find that. It's um, it's a, a new video that I posted. And in the show notes, it will give you a direct link to both directions, whether you're doing sewing only version. Oh, or the wonderful. Okay. Wonderful. So oh, that's helpful. Watch the steps. And then obviously, if you've been watching this on Facebook, you know, if you go back to Beth's quilts and lace page, or if you've shared it to your own page, you can go back and, and watch that as well. So yeah. Excellent. Excellent. And April is mentioning one of my favorite tools, the uh, cut right uh, bind up tool. And in fact, the funny thing, April, you're mentioning that today is that I, I haven't pulled it out in quite a while. And we had a customer come in today and she said, I don't know how to put this binding on. And so I was able to show that cut right tool uh, to her. And it, it is, it's my favorite method of uh, making sure that the binding meets up. So it is a good one. So I, I could show that real quick tomorrow if we have time. But my goal tomorrow then will be to show on the Stellaire, uh, which of course um, relates right to the Baby Lock Altair also, um, how to do uh, this technique. And uh, Joanne um, is being so helpful. She's going to write the directions for me. So it's a no miss situation, guys. Uh, no just cautionary make... tales for me. <laughs> It'll make it quick. <laughs> I want to make it quick and easy for you. That's all. Good, 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 and good. I know and I've then, seen you. I've seen you demonstrate that tool. Isn't that tool the one that helps you make perfect mitered corners too? Um, that, no, I have not used it for the mitered corners. No. Okay. But let's see. I wonder if you could use it for that. You probably could use it for that because it would make it match up. I haven't done that. I'll research and see if uh, if you can use it for that. And I did not miter just for the sake of um, explanation here. I did not miter the corners on mine. I just did two edges, you know, two parallel Folded edges, it under. Yeah. and then went back and just turned that under. So yeah. you can see, I just, you know, made sure that it was uh, wider on the back side than it was on the front side. Top stitch that. Hope you can see that top stitching really close. Yeah, that's a nice finishing touch too. Yeah. Just an easy finish. But again, you can see mine is not quilted all the way through, although you certainly could. I just wanted to leave open the option so that if somebody wasn't comfortable doing binding if that that seemed yeah. like a big deal to them they could just you know layer this back piece against the layers that you have all finished on the front um so around when we say pillowcase style i know that's kind of a crazy term but that's it is a popular term it just means right sides together and leave an opening yep just like the you pocket it. that you did just like yeah. the pocket exactly yeah. exactly and then just tuck that in and, uh, you know, top stitch it closed and you'd be all done. Good to go. Yay. Well, thank you, Joanne, so much. So uh, join uh, join me tomorrow and hopefully Joanne, too, um, uh, if she's not swimming. <laughs> yeah, I'll try to pop in. I might have dripping hair. <laughs> oh, there you go. Uh, well, yeah, and I, uh, you know, I had such a nice hairdo yesterday and today it's already frizzy. Ugh. But, well, um. Thank you to everyone for joining yes, us, thank especially you so if you were much. with us for the whole series. This has been, um, it's been a lot of fun. So I'm sure we'll yeah. do something again in the future. Yeah. Joanne and I have already been thinking. So <laughs> thank you, Joanne, for making this so easy for me. You're welcome. Yes, that's great. Um, oh, and uh, yeah, you were with us on Gay, with Gay yesterday. So Gay, yeah, uh, see, Gay just popped on. Hey, Gay, you did a beautiful job showing how to make that quilted candy bag yesterday. If anybody and, missed that, make sure you go back to the Quilts and Lace page and um, see, see, watch Gay make that. Yeah, uh, watch her Facebook yesterday because that was uh, fun. Uh, Anne said that her husband, Rick, actually watches us on Facebook. And Gay, Rick, loved your episode better than Anne and I. So we have to have you back again, Gay. She and did a fabulous job. Kiss. That was such a great idea to draw it. So um, I hope you can join us again, Gay. Uh, Doris is saying teacher. thank you. And Linda is saying thank you. Wendy says great job. Thanks, Keep Wendy. Done. Very good. Very good. And and bye to Josie. And uh, oh, good. And April April says that Gay taught her more about the luminaire too. Wonderful. Great. Yay. Yeah, she did. She's a good teacher. I really liked what she did. Um, so Celeste came in a few minutes late. Hey, Celeste. Hey. Led better late than never. <laughs> oh, good. Good. And good. Gay says we'll do it again. Yay, Gay. Yay. 
So any final questions? Give us your questions if you've got them. Pop them in here real quick so we yep. make sure we... Or anything um, you want me to make sure to include tomorrow. But my goal tomorrow then will be to um, uh, show you how to do this uh, embroidery. Yep, just like uh, Joanne is showing there on uh, some other machines. So that'll be great. And then piece, and then just placing it all together. And oh, if you guys, because um, uh, a couple people did say they were stitching along with us. Good. Uh, please post it on our Facebook uh, group, um, Quilts and Lace Sew Along. So please post on there so we can share with everybody. And Josie is asking what time tomorrow. So you've got a different time <laughs> slot on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. So on Saturday, you're correct, Josie. On Saturday, we have it at uh, three o'clock. So three ish, ish. Um, because we are, uh, we always do this in the store on uh, Monday through Saturday. And sometimes things happen. So um, three ish. And if you do like our Facebook uh, page, I think you do get a notification that we're going live. So. Uh, that might make it easier. So good. Very and good. Joanne, what do you have next coming up in the world? Oh, lots of things. <laughs> lots of things. I've got a lot more um, online things going on. I'm going to be guest on the Brother Sews um, live show on September 7th. I've got some other um, different shows that I'm doing here and there. So Lot, lot going on online lately. Oh, yes. Sure. Yes. Well, good. Good thing you're so good at it. Well, <laughs> stay tuned. <laughs> I thought it was very clear and uh, and does make it look super easy. So I hope everybody else finds it that way, too. Very All right, good. guys, everybody, please stay safe. And thank you Happy so much so. for joining us tonight. And Joanne, thank you for all your hard work. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. All right. My Bye, pleasure. guys.